State at Westminster Hall. Wearing full military uniform, they took their watch alongside the Queen's casket. Summoned to duty. King Charles, Princess Anne and Princess Edward and Andrew, the Queen's four children, pace their way through the cavernous Westminster Hall to stand with their mother lying in state. The duty officer calls them to service, stepping onto the catafalque for the historic tradition known as the Vigil of the Princes. All kept their heads bowed. At the front of the coffin, Charles. At the rear, scandal-plagued Andrew. His brother, the king, giving him one-off permission to wear his uniform. Not for him, but a mark of respect for his mother. Edward the youngest on one side, the princess royal on the other. The first woman to ever take part in a vigil. This giant hall in Westminster, home to the parliament, and streaming past either side of the coffin, the queue of MPs, members of the public. Most of them in disbelief that after lining up over 12 hours, they happened to be there just as the royals came in. Oh yeah, you've got five hours to go, you've got two hours to go, and we thought, hang on, if that's actually accurate, we're gonna be bang on there as soon as it happens. They were literally within feet of us, and I saw the king, well, all of them, all the siblings and his siblings, and it, it was just, it was beautiful. Their solemnity um, was, it was so powerful. Also present tonight, but on watch from above, the Queen Consort Camilla and extended members of the royal family, including the children. Tomorrow, Prince William and Harry will lead the Queen's other six grandchildren in another vigil. Harry, too, granted special permission to wear his uniform despite being stripped of all duties. After ten minutes, their time had ended. The guard was changing again, the King leading them out. The next time the King and his siblings will see the Queen, of course, will be Monday morning, the day of the funeral, when they are slowly walking behind her coffin as it's taken from here, the Palace of Westminster, to Westminster Abbey, for a final farewell. While those who'd been witness to history tonight were left almost speechless. I was like trying to open my eyes wide, trying to take every detail of it in. I saw the whole family. I can't believe it. We came into the chamber about three minutes before the end of the job. Absolutely amazing. So moving. It's just so beautiful. It was very emotional seeing the royal family in there. It was amazing. I'm still a bit shaken up. But just two hours after they'd left, a security scare. A man crash tackled after rushing the coffin and pulling away the royal standard draped over the casket. He pushed aside a seven-year-old girl to get there. Darcy was grabbed out of the way and the police had him within two seconds. Is she okay? No, not at all. It was the only blight on an otherwise orderly queue when some even met royalty outside. Sports royalty. English soccer legend David Beckham. He'd queued for 12 hours. Everybody wants to be here to be part of this experience and celebrate what Her Majesty has done for us. But the lines are being overwhelmed by demand. At one stage, the queues had to be suspended when wait times blew out to 22 hours. Even though we had to wait 13 hours today, um, it was worth it. Chris Reason joins us live from Westminster. Chris, uh, the Queen's grandchildren will carry out their own vigil in the coming hours. Yeah, good, uh, good evening to you, Katrina. We've learned that uh, when that vigil happens, Prince William will stand at the head of the coffin. Prince Harry will stand at her feet. The vigil will last some 15 minutes. And given what we saw overnight with the attendance of the uh, broader uh, members of the royal family, it's more than likely that tonight, today, we will see uh, the Princess of Wales, Kate, her three children, and the Duch Duchess of Sussex, uh, Meghan, attend. Now, this morning, we have got some more pictures in of rehearsals continuing, not here in London this time, but in Windsor, where, of course, uh, they will host the second part of the ceremonial proceedings for this funeral on Monday. Uh, we know that the state hearse will arrive there and a 1,000 soldiers will uh, help in the procession, taking Her Majesty into St George's Chapel, where she'll be laid to rest. 
beside her husband, Prince Philip. Katrina. All right, thank you, Rizzo. Chris Reason there in Westminster. Before his ascension to the throne, King Charles was the Prince of Wales for more than six decades. Today, he returned to a country deeply connected to the monarchy. He was mostly met by cheering crowds, but the visit wasn't without controversy. The longest serving Prince of Wales returning today as King. Receiving a warm Welsh welcome from most who lined the streets. Skin looks so soft. <laughs> his, his skin. His skin, Prince Charles' skin looks so soft. But not everyone is as complimentary. While we struggle to heat our homes, we have to pay for your parade. Thank you for coming. The taxpayer pays £100 million for you. That man concerned about the cost of living while the king and queen consort arrived at the 2,000-year-old Cardiff Castle to cheers and booze. Welsh nationalists in the crowd angry the new Prince of Wales, William, is another Englishman. A period of mourning, which I respect, uh, but there's also a political event, which the monarchy, the palace, kicked off with the succession process. A grievance dating back decades. Two radical nationalists were killed trying to plant a bomb on the eve of Charles's investiture ceremony in Wales in 1969, with rumours he wore a bulletproof vest under his robes. Now, 30,000 people have signed a petition calling for the Prince of Wales title to be abolished. Well, there is a legitimate debate here in Wales around that whole issue. My own view is that this is not the week for that debate to surface. Instead, Wales's First Minister offered his condolences inside Parliament, the King replying in English... I am deeply grateful for the addresses of condolence, which so movingly paid tribute to our late sovereign my beloved mother, the Queen. And in Welsh. Dioch o galon ichi. A language many have fought hard to protect. The ongoing challenge for King Charles and the new Prince and Princess of Wales will be proving their relevance in this modern country. William and Kate have already vowed to spend the years ahead deepening their relationship with people here. I think we need to see more of them. I think that William and Kate have done everything what they possibly can anyway. I think they've got the respect of the people. As of course did the Queen. Her Majesty's wedding ring was made of Welsh gold, a reminder of the country, she said, wherever she went. Today, the people of Wales remembered her. This was truly a life of grace and wisdom. An example, many hope, will help shape the future. In Cardiff, Sarah Greenolch, Seven News. Anthony Albanese has wasted no time paying his respects to the Queen, laying a wreath for Her Majesty near Buckingham Palace after landing in London. Let's bring in Ashley Mullaney. And Ash, the Prime Minister has a busy day ahead. He does. Good evening, Katrina. Anthony Albanese has arrived here in Kent for what will be his first meeting with the new UK Prime Minister Liz Truss. The pair had spoken on the phone after the Queen's passing, but this will be an, op an opportunity to pay Australia's condolences in person. This coming after the Prime Minister laid flowers amongst that sea of flowers just near Buckingham Palace, sharing this message. Monday will be a sombre day, but it will also be a day of celebrating a life well lived, a life of service, a life in which Queen Elizabeth will be remembered for centuries. Mr Albanese will be among 2,000 guests at the Queen's funeral on Monday. This afternoon he will head to Westminster Hall where the Queen is lying in state. Later this afternoon uh, he also has an audience with the King. So a busy few days ahead, Katrina. It certainly is. Thank you, Ashley Mullaney.
The Prince of Wales says the Queen will be looking down on her state funeral as he met Australian troops preparing to take part in the service. William and Kate thanking the Commonwealth soldiers, some of whom took part in the Queen's Jubilee celebrations just three months ago. <laughs> The Commonwealth contingent for Her Majesty's funeral has arrived. The Kiwis, Canadians and Australians to honour the Queen, Prince William's grandmother. Having them all, all with the three nations here marching as one, it just shows how much the Queen has again brought us all together. Today, the new Prince and Princess of Wales came to say thank you. <laughs> Both William and Catherine describing the last few months as strange. To someone that has so much on her plate um, in, in the past week that she takes the time to come see us, it makes us all feel quite special. Some of these troops marched to celebrate the Platinum Jubilee in June. Now they're preparing to honour the Queen in death. 39 Australians will form up alongside their Commonwealth cousins ahead of the coffin just the way the Queen wanted it. I think this is probably the most significant military ceremonial function all of us will ever attend in our careers. Along with the Canadians and the Kiwis, the Australians will be practising every day and every night in the run-up to the funeral on Monday, knowing with a billion eyes watching, they need to get it right. For one person in particular. <laughs> she'll, she'll be watching. Adding Her Majesty was a stickler for detail. In Purbright, England, Hewitt Feld, 7 News. Australians invited to the Queen's funeral on Monday are gathering in London. Among them, Australia's only living recipient of the George Cross, Michael Pratt, a former Victorian police officer who foiled a bank robbery and was shot in the process. I knew it better than most. Yeah. Close to tears for a Queen he's already missing, the sole member of one of Australia's most exclusive clubs. People don't realise that you actually exist, you know, there's only one of me. Michael Pratt is our only living George Cross recipient, the highest civilian bravery award. It's now earned the former Victoria police officer a Westminster funeral invite after decades of royal recognition. We've met with her many, many times. She's very genuine, you know, she's just like your grandmother. Really, that's the best way I can explain it. Equal to a Victoria Cross for military bravery, the George Cross was instituted by Her Majesty's father, a Valour Medal for civilian courage during the London Blitz, far from the Melbourne Street in 1976, where Michael was shot during an armed hold-up, earning his. It is uh, quite a vivid memory most of the time. So too the memory of the woman who bestowed Michael with his honour, a person he grew to know and cherish. That first time I met her, I was, uh, was shaking a little bit that day. How do you think you're going to feel come Monday? Oh, tough day. Don't worry about that. I'm not dreading it a little bit. Emotional as this will be for Australia's only George Cross recipient, come Monday here in London, Michael Pratt will be supported by Australia's four Victoria Cross recipients. This small band of bravery's inclusion on this select guest list, the express wish of the late monarch. So to these 10 everyday Australians arriving with the PM and Governor General, Australian of the Year Dylan Alcott, past and present senior Australians of the Year, local heroes, esteemed professors and horse trainer Gay Waterhouse after Chris Waller pulled out with COVID, all ready to pay their respects and difficult goodbyes. And, uh, like I say, she was very good to me. In London, David Woywood, 7 News.